we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you a special presentation of Two Nerds, the podcast. Your home for everything movies, movie, music, video games, and everything in between. With your host, Bunny the Bruiser. How's it going, everyone, boys and girls around the world? We are two nerds, and this is a podcast. I am Buddy the Bruiser, and howdy, y'all! I'm Dynamite Jared. Yep, conservative sympathizer Dynamite Jared's on the fucking track tonight. <laughs> Goddamn, bro! I'm on the track every night, but you just edit out my conservative sympathizing. <laughs> Uh, so we are back again. Um, third episode of season four, essentially. Um, what's going on, Cat? It just showed up. We're watching the fucking Laker game right now. Yeah, we're watching the Lakers versus the Portland Trail Blazers. So we to age this podcast a little bit is um, game four of the 2020 NBA playoffs, uh, first round Lakers versus Portland Trail Blazers. And if some if there's some sort of historic comeback tonight, <laughs> we'll, we'll let you know. We'll get some live reactions it'll, going. It'll uh, this podcast will <laughs> will be documentation. You will look back on this podcast and, and be like, "Wow, that was the night that." Because what? It's thirty Lakers, ten Portland right now. We'll see where it is when it's we're done recording. It's looking pretty bleak for <laughs> Portland right now. Yeah. So but we got the TV on mute. We're gonna try not to let it distract us too much. I'll probably look over like after the podcast is done and Portland's up happens. like freaking like sixty to thirty. The held the Lakers to zero <laughs> points <laughs> from this for, point on. The hour they're not scoring from this point on. Well, I mean, it's off to game. a good start. They just scored two, and the Lakers are still at thirty. Yeah, but did Nurkic just commit a foul? I don't, I don't know. I, was, I don't know. Yeah. So. But yeah, so we've been having some conversations already, Kat. We've been talking about what? Online dating <laughs> and talking about you going back to school potentially. We're talking about all kinds of shit so far. So we were just like, fuck it. We're just going to roll and keep going. I do have some talking points, um, but we'll just we'll just shoot the shit for a little bit as always. So what's kind of what's on your mind, Kat? Uh, I'm thinking about going back to school. And uh, trying to finish the degree that I barely started because it beat the shit out of me back when I first went to school. Like you said, I guess, that the first couple semesters are really trying to weed out the cowards. And I yeah, was, I would particularly like that first and second semester, like, like it's especially like with the fucking like math classes they make you take that you'll never have to worry about again. Yeah. Like a lot of the first things is like, all right, we got to get the, the scrubs out of here and stuff. So the first. Um, it, there's a Death Striker song about a math class from college. Oh, really? That I wrote. Yeah. yeah. Torture Chamber. It was yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was about your math class. That was about my college math class. And it's just worded in a way that it could be about literally anything. Anything. It's just basically about a torture chamber. But when I wrote it, I was thinking about my college math class. I may have even been sitting in my college math class <laughs> while, I, while I wrote it. Yeah, which would explain would why I did very poorly. Yeah, in in school and you, and in high school, I kind of did pretty good in algebra, but I was never in like an advanced algebra or like uh-huh. college prep calculus or anything like that. Yeah. Like, but you know, I got to algebra two eventually, and eventually, I don't that, know why. I, I don't know. I took freshman year. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's that's what's what I mean. I was never in like the advanced course, but I don't understand why because as far back as I can remember, I did like algebra was one of my best subjects. Yeah. Probably because I was in the easy classes, but you would think that after like two or three years of A's and B's in it, that they would right. be like, oh, "All right, well, let's shoot you up to the uh, well." The problem is, is like the one, crazy one. Once you get like started, like in high school and shit, like if you don't start, like with it, like there's no real way to catch up because it's not like you can skip one of the classes, you know. I could like, skip it. <laughs> I could skip it. I would start because algebra two was literally like the same as like fucking algebra one, if I recall correctly. Just that we would get more complex. That we would get to it. And then, like, he would bring up, like, 
God order of operations again or something. <laughs> and it's like halfway through the year, and I'm like, order of operations. Well, yeah. I could read my Shonen Jump during this <laughs> class. Yeah, and I'd have my homework done like. 15 minutes before the class was even over and yeah. shit because you know the assignment would always be written on the board and I'd be yeah. like oh okay turn to that page do my homework in the class so it was class work for me yeah. and then like at the end you know Shonen Jump was busted out and I remember one time the teacher came up to me and was like you can't be you can't be reading this shit in my <laughs> classroom You why aren't you working on the homework and I was like oh, are you kidding me like this first off it's called homework and second off i got it done like while you were still talking about it yeah. <laughs> so yeah yeah high school yeah it Fun. sure it would sure be nice if the college professors uh oh it looks like anthony davis got a karate chop to the throat he did yeah it was like right there on his chin like bang oh my god yeah. this is gonna mark the end of anthony davis's basketball career yeah right there it's a historic over. episode um <laughs> The uh, it'd be nice if the college professors wrote the homework assignment on the board before they started the lecture, so I could just, <laughs> so, you could just so I could just hop right into it instead of paying yeah. attention to what they're saying. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. For all of you people who listen to this podcast and went to college, let us know your experience because I was telling Jared, like as you said, like once you sort of get into the swing of things, it's not so hard. Well, you like, kept going. I did keep going. I got that. And you didn't have, you didn't have to. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> Yeah, because, like, in high school, they always, like, hype it up, like, oh, you're going to be studying all the time, all these fucking... Did you have, like, scholarships or anything? No, I didn't have any No, so you just my rack parents, it up more my debt? My parents made too much money, so, yeah, makes it tough for the children <laughs> that now have to deal with the debt, but, you know, yeah. the system's fucked, and you guys hate Bernie Sanders out there who wants to cancel everything, so, you know what, fuck you guys. Jesus Christ, you know, I, I wasn't even th- thinking about that. If Bernie Sanders would have won... I could have waited a little bit and maybe you could have went just went free. to college for free. Yeah. That would have been insane. But no, I mean, y'all tried to destroy him out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. talking to you, Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Um, so, yeah, let us know your college experience. Far left sympathizer, Dynamite Jared over far, here. Far left sympathizer. So, um, we did get some feedback from last week, but the problem is... I don't know if No Star Reviews deleted the comment or YouTube is holding it for review and I can't see it. I even went into U- into YouTube Studio and it normally shows like the stuff that was reported as spam and stuff that's like held for review. But like as you see right here, I click on his fucking comment, it's gone, and then I even tried it on the computer and everything. I can't see anything past this first section of your comment, No Star Reviews. So recomment. So recomment, let us know what you said. I do see the beginning portion where you're talking about us demanding Spotify has a comment section for you. Yeah. So we're going to get right on that. <laughs> we're going to start right now. Spotify, we know that we are one of your most played shows, and we're making Spotify a ton of money right now. Yeah. Ever since we've debuted on the platform two episodes ago. Everything's going through the roof. We've been the hottest podcast on Spotify. And so Spotify, we have demands. Yeah. We are going to withdraw the show if you don't, at least put a comment section on our show. Yeah, on our show at least. I mean, we come with the. It fuck. would be it would be good to put it on the whole platform though. Yeah. Like your, your new favorite band drops a new album, you can comment on it. Comment yeah. on it, be like, "Hey, good album," or like, "What the hell did you do? You sold out, like yeah. you're trash." Right. But yeah, I mean, YouTube better start. I mean, not YouTube, Spotify better come rolling in with the bucks because we got those fire thumbnails. Now, it wasn't the best episode last week. Well, I'll be, we'll be honest about it. The Skype episodes aren't always the best, but that thumbnail is fucking fire. I was I was halfway asleep through the entire yeah. episode. Yeah. Sleepwalking through the episode. Yeah. Playing Dokkan while... <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens. Um, so, yeah, No Star Reviews, you kind of left us on a little bit of a cliffhanger, or YouTube did, because the last thing I see that you said is, the only thing that sucked with me... And then a bunch of dots. And I'm assuming he's talking about his COVID. But I can't see oh, what he's saying. Yeah. So I just see the only thing that sucked with me, dot, dot, dot. I was seriously going to be like, who's this guy that they keep El- focusing on? And it's Elgin fucking Baylor. <laughs> with a fucking image that was on Miles' phone. It's the most pixelated thing I've ever seen Oh, in my yeah. Life. They can't zoom in on these, these trons. These screens. So I guess uh, while we're sort of on the subject of these screens, last night was SummerSlam. 
Um, well, that was a trash show. <laughs> <laughs> it was not very good. Um, there was a couple. There's a couple of good matches, right? I honestly, I can tell you so little that I retained from last night. I, I mean, nothing really memorable. But I do remember watch Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. I like as they were wrestling and they just kind of. We're going, and we're about three quarters through the match, and I was like, "It's still going." <laughs> I think I looked over at Miles and was like, "It's a pretty good fucking match." Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And you know what? They didn't do any stupid flippy shit either. You were all you last night. You were ups- really upset about the flippy shit. Well, because I know you and Miles are marks for the. No, flippy I'm not shit. a mark for the. Here's the thing: I made one comment, and it, and you took it the way that I did not expect you to take it. But we were talking about the NXT match with Adam Cole and oh, Pat, and the, how Pat McAfee. McAfee did some flippy stuff or well, whatever. Because you said it was a good. If it was a good match, I said yeah, he did a good job. Like he did like some flips and stuff. Basically, I was alluding to the fact that he wasn't a fucking like scrub, and you're like oh. Oh, fuck the flippy shit. That doesn't make a good match, brother. It I'm doesn't. Like, I didn't Christ. say it did. Watch a fucking Lucha House Party match <laughs> and tell me that it's good. Jesus Christ. I didn't say it was good. I was just saying You remember that. when El Torito fucking <laughs> beat Drew McIntyre? <laughs> <laughs> fuck, bro. But yeah, so. Yeah. I didn't remember that until they played it on a video package yeah. last night. Yeah, when they were showing. But well, that's probably the sign that it was a terrible match. Yeah. Well, because that was part of the, that was part of the twenty four after where he was talking about his struggles, right? Well, yeah, his last match in WWE uh, was El Torito during his first run was jobbing to El Torito. Yeah, now he's champ. So I mean, whatever. so I mean, what was that like during a three man band versus uh, the Los Matadores feud or something, something like, like that? that? Yeah, I, yeah. Can't, I wasn't watching at that point. But yeah, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> fucking air ball right there. Kuzmo with the air ball. Fu- fucking garbage right now. But um, last, I don't know why WWE has been doing Last night was a super short pay-per-view. It felt so long. And I think, it, like, there were only, like, eight matches, but I think all of them, like, went, like, an extra, like, at least five minutes longer than they should have. Like, almost every match. I mean, it ended at, like, 10, 15, though. I don't know. It's, everything feels so long on WWE anymore because it's all, like, so boring and bad and formulaic. Yeah. And, I mean, like, I don't know what they're doing. Because they're putting all of AJ Styles' matches, like, on SmackDown. And, like, I get that, like, they want SmackDown to get the ratings because, like, it's on Fox. But, like, you're having, like, these pay-per-views and it's just, like... I don't really care. I mean, like, they, they put AJ Styles a match on SummerSlam well. To me, it's not really going to fix anything or make the show any better. Like, you know, I'm sure Midnight Miles would be like, oh my God, they should put AJ Styles on the fucking show. But to me, 90% of a good match is, not 90%, but like half of a good match is the story going into it. And if you can't write a good story to save your fucking life, which by the way, they can't. They can't ever. So, like, okay, you're just going to throw AJ Styles in there with somebody that's good, and maybe they'll have a, a good technical match. And to me, I'm probably never going to fucking remember it, yeah. honestly, because it's going to be, like, a really stupid story going into it. Like, it's going to be like, AJ Styles, I want your Intercontinental title that you don't have anymore, and I'm going to throw pie in your face backstage until the pay-per-view. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's some shit that would actually happen. You remember when Dean Ambrose rode down to the ring on a hot dog cart and started (laughs) squirting Seth Rollins with ketchup and mustard? I I do recall. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. I'll tell you what was good last night. Roman Reigns made a return. Oh, yeah, that was good. And in a rare moment for me, I was like... Stoked to see him. Damn, I'm happy (laughs) to see Roman Reigns. Because Roman Reigns came out and meant total fucking business. And he came out... He just beat the fucking shit out of the fiend, and he beat the fucking shit out of Braun Strowman. And this is what I want to see professional wrestlers do: show up and beat the fucking shit out of people. I don't want to see people rolling down on hot dog carts. I don't want to see them dumping dog food on people's heads or coming to the ring dressed up as dogs or all the stupid shit that they do or fucking, you know, you know, no food humor. <laughs> 
there's uh, a time and place for that stuff, but I see I see what you're saying. I don't even know if there's a time and place for it. Well, not anymore. like the dumbass shit, but I mean like Stone Cold. I think I remember when some stuff and what he do with food. I mean, he had the beer truck. I mean, it's not food, but like that I'm, was I, I'm that saying, fit I'm saying, his character. That's what I'm though. saying. There's a time and place for stuff that's a little bit goofy. That fit his character. He fucking drank beer all the time, so he drove a beer truck to. That was and also. You're telling me the food truck didn't reflect Dean Ambrose's character. He's wacky. He's uh, kooky. I the lunatic like fringe. Up until that point, he was just crazy, and I liked it. <laughs> he was like unhinged, and that was cool. And then suddenly, he was riding, flying down the ring. On, <laughs> on, it wasn't like. Well, okay, I guess you could be like, oh, that sounds crazy to me. Like, it wasn't like a circus clown before, <laughs> okay? Like, he was like, he became like a circus clown yeah. at a certain point. But before that, he was like, kind of like deranged. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was like a deranged baby face. Like mankind. Yeah. Like, in like a different way. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. Like, he just like, he was like the guy that would like, I don't know if he ever did this, but, like, you know, would start maybe punching himself in the head, you know, when he was, like, cutting a promo or something. Yeah, because he sounds was like fucking, something he would do, yeah. Like, getting pissed off just thinking about what he was going to do to Seth Rollins. He had to start taking out the aggression on something, so he's punching himself or something stupid like that. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. But, it, you know, like, he was like a baby face serial killer. Pretty much, yeah. But I mean, yeah, like like uh, the one guy in NXT, uh, uh, Karrion Cross. No, he's not a baby face. Oh, you're talking about? I thought you were just talking about serial killer. Uh, Dexter Loomis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's hurt right now? Yeah. Easy money for LeBron. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Roman Reigns came back. He beat the shit out of everybody, and I was like, "Huh, more of this, please." Yes. More of this, Roman Reigns. Now we'll see how he, what kind of promo he cuts on SmackDown, and uh, if it's any good or not. What he has to say about it, I might be invested in the Roman Reigns yeah. character. Right now, I am. I'm interested. Yeah. So we'll see. So I don't know. You think the Fiend is just a transitional champ here? You think he's going to drop it to Roman right away, or what? Instead of having Roman just go up against Strowman or whatever. No. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't Strowman? Drop it to Roman because he's a baby face. I mean, not he, that it matters. He like but. turned heel like a week before the match with the Fiend. He attacked Alexa Bliss. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he went. But what, I mean, still like going into the match. What was. kind of baby face does that? Stone Cold. I mean, a shitty. One. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but Stone Cold never. Uh, he did stunner. He uh, stunned all kinds of women. What are you talking about? Stacy no, well, Keebler. All yeah, that's that's the one I was thinking of. Stacy Keebler, and uh, I don't know if she was babyface or heel at the time. She it, but just it was didn't usually, like beer. Yeah, it was <laughs> usually it was. it was usually like Stephanie McMahon or one time he hit Linda McMahon. That was pretty <laughs> funny. Um, I guess there's such a thing as the Linda McMahon pop. Yeah. I'd what are you talking about? WrestleMania X7, she got the biggest pop on the planet. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, my God. The Linda McMahon pop. That's crazy. Uh, X7, is that? 17. Oh, yeah. That was after, that was WrestleMania 2000 was 16. Yeah. 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 Right. They don't call it 16, though. They call it 2000. That's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the no. main event should have been Rock versus Triple H. No, no, it was a four-way cat. You, got, you, gotta, just, you gotta get the big show in there. No, you know how big he is? He's the big show. So, uh, yeah, uh, Roman Reigns back. Cool. Uh, that's like the first time I've ever said anything good about Roman Reigns on the podcast. Yeah. I think. We, we've said, here's the thing, we've always established that he's probably like the coolest guy, but like his character's just total trash. And... Right, he's, well, he's average in the ring. It but. seems like they might be going in a different direction with this character. Yeah, which and is he good. was even wearing the shirt last night. What was it like? Destroy everyone or something? Yeah, it was like beat the shit out of everyone, yeah. basically. Which is like, dude, I'm cool because I used to love it back in the day, and I don't want to compare Roman Reigns to Steve Austin because he's not, and he never will be. No one ever will be. But I used to love back in the day when it was like Stone Cold would come out like pretty much every fucking match. 
and just stun everybody, everybody in the match. He wanted something, so he just started beating the shit out of everybody. And then, uh, like, they did that leading up to the 97 Royal Rumble. Or was it the 98 Royal Rumble? One of the two. What are you referring to? I don't know. There was a the second Royal Rumble that Stone Cold won. The one that he actually fucking won. The first one he actually won because the, the first time he won the Royal Rumble, he was actually eliminated. Mm-hmm. And then he slid back into the ring because the refs didn't see it. And then yeah. he eliminated everybody and was declared the winner. So officially, he's recognized as the winner of like the 1997 Royal Rumble. Yeah. It had to be 97 because he yeah, won the well, championship 90- in 98. In early 98. So the 19... 19- well, the, the 98, that then would have been the 98 Royal Rumble. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So... The 1998 Royal Rumble, um, Stone Cold had like a uh, a bounty on his head or whatever, and like you know whoever eliminated Stone Cold was like getting a ransom or some shit like that. Oh really? So like leading up to the pay per view, it was like Stone Cold like striking first, and literally <laughs> everybody would be having matches. I remember specifically Jeff Jarrett was just having a match. He he won the match, and he was celebrating. He did the strut, yeah. and Stone Cold was in the ring behind him with the SCU <laughs> tank top yeah. and some jeans on, and he was, you know, waving him on. Yeah. Jeff Jarrett turns around, stunner, and then Stone yeah. Cold did the strut, yeah. and then rolled out of the ring and, like, ran out through yeah. the crowd. <laughs> he's Fucking beating the life. shit out of people backstage, and, like, yeah. everybody's having matches. Well, Stone Cold's, like, running out there and kicking them, yeah. stunnering them after the match. Yeah. So I like shit like that. Undertaker used to do that sometimes. Yeah, just he like would the, just like the fuck everyone come out and just be yeah. like, you know, Vince McMahon, I'm gonna keep coming out here, beating the fuck out of these guys until you give me what I want. Yeah. So who we were talking about this last night? Who did you say said that Stone Cold was a trash wrestler? Or my average? boss. Oh yeah. <laughs> my boss. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I lose my job tomorrow. <laughs> What a goddamn idiot. Um, yeah, it said Stone Cold's a bad wrestler. Okay. Okay, dude. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> okay, man. I honestly don't know if there's ever been a top guy in, in WWF that's been a bad wrestler. And you could say Hogan, and that would definitely apply to his WWF time. But a secret that some people don't know a lot of casual fans that like to be smart fans don't know is that hulk hogan was actually a really good wrestler and that maybe not really good but he was still a good wrestler and that he just did like the formula that worked in wwf and in wcw but then if you go back and watch some of his matches when he used to go to japan Hulk Hogan would put his working boots on and yeah. he would start having good ass matches. And like, oh geez, who knew? You know what I mean? Yeah. Here's Hulk Hogan doing fucking arm drags and shit. <laughs> like So, um, I mean, Hulk Hogan was a good worker. Um, and I mean, even you can say what you will about him, but I mean, dude, he got a good match out of the Ultimate Warrior once upon a time. <laughs> once upon a time. He had, he had good mat he would have good matches, like uh, no, I was just saying with Warrior, the one match. Oh, yeah, good. the one match was good. The but, Halloween Havoc one, I'd rather die. Yeah. Um, but, I, well, by the time it came to WCW time, he was not having good <laughs> matches no. anymore. Yeah. They somehow uh, fucked up the old Sting versus Hogan thing. Yeah. That was pretty bad. Like, that to this day, like, when I sit there and think about it, it still kind of annoys me. Like how good of a storyline they had leading up to that match and how they blew it off with just like a little fucking... Yeah. It was a blunder at the end. Yeah. It's like a really good movie with the, the shittiest ending you've ever seen in your life. I mean, that's classic WCW for you. I mean, how much... What do you expect, I guess? I don't know. You remember when Ric Flair was the fucking... The Black Scorpion? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Even though... Clearly, like, like other dudes had showed up that were just like absolutely fucking jacked to the gills as the Black Scorpion. <laughs> it was just not. And bad. then it ended up being Ric Flair, who was not like I. I think they had Rick Rude under that hood at one well, point. Because that's what I was gonna bring up. It wasn't the wasn't it. It was something like the the, there ha- was the another, Halloween demon or something. Yeah, the, and it was clearly Rick because you could see his mustache yeah. under it. No, we watched the Halloween Havoc tape the one time with yeah. the. 
the like the Halloween demon or something. I can't even remember what he was. The Halloween superstar or something like something like that. Yeah, I can't remember. But it ended up being Rick. He revealed himself at the end and joined the Dangerous Alliance. Uh, it was something like one of those stables at the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't was, know what it was. It had to be the Dangerous Alliance. Oh, cool. Anything else you want to say about wrestling or beating people up? I don't know what else to say. Uh, literally, the only thing that's memorable about SummerSlam to me was the Roman thing, and really can't really name too much other stuff. Oscar won the Raw title. She did. Yeah, she did. Uh, that was, I was cool. I liked that. I kind of wanted her to win both. Yeah. What did we predict? We, we predicted, I predicted that she wasn't going to win either of them. I think you said that she would win one. Yeah, I mean, you might have got it right. I think you might have said it was Sasha. And I, just, I remember we were both pissed about the booking last night about it with the Sasha and Bailey thing. Oh, yeah. They could have executed that way better. And it doesn't even take that much time to really think about how you could have done that better. Um, miscommunication there with Bailey and, like, and Asuka. Hit her with the elbow, spinning back elbow, the Judas effect. Um, Asuka hit her with the Judas effect, and then um, Bailey went down, and then um, Sasha got caught in the Asuka lock and That's it. tapped out. And then, you know, they played it up like, oh my God, you know, like Bailey cost her the match, but. Like See, it really could it tried. really could have been something along the lines like they could have even done it like the way they did it. And Asuka catches her with the fucking Judas effect, the spinning back elbow or whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, knocks her off the apron, gets gets um uh Sasha and the Asuka lock. Okay, now they're in the middle of the ring, Asuka lock. Okay, what does Bailey have to do at this point? She could go in there and she could do something. She yeah. could get the disqualification. You know what I mean? Sasha would retain in the event of a disqualification if she jumped Asuka, right? Yeah. Or she could, you know, refs not looking, pull them towards, yeah, pull them towards the, the rope, yeah. or what? Or do like one of the, you know, she could do something, okay? But I'm not advocating that she did did something here. What I'm saying is, they're in the center of the ring. Bailey's now thinking about doing something. She gets up on the ring apron, okay, and then. She's like, no. She looks, <laughs> and it's Asuka. has got her in the Asuka lock, and she's just staring the fucking into the soul of fucking Bailey with the fucking meanest fucking look she's ever seen. And then Bailey just slowly retreats back down to the side to the side of the ring. Decide thinks better of it. Decides not to get involved because she doesn't want to get her ass beat by Asuka. Yeah. And then Sasha ends up tapping. And then, then it's actually like she. And then the you could say, Sasha, what the fuck? I helped you retain your title earlier. You cowered like a little bitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you could start building that tension that way. To me, if you tried to help me win a match, you got caught with a fucking spinning back elbow, and then you tapped out, or well, then I tapped out shortly after. I'd be like, well, damn, man, I, she got the better of us. You know, she busted you in the fucking mouth with an elbow, and yeah. you were out of commission on the, you know, the shit happens, I guess. Yeah. It, I definitely would not blame you for that. <laughs> yeah. Especially if I fucking tapped out. Yeah. So. Well, we'll see where it goes. I mean, It doesn't make any fucking sense, just like half the shit yeah, WWE doesn't do. Yeah, it doesn't make any do. sense. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I have to say about wrestling right now. Um, obviously, Raw is happening right now. We are not watching it. And SmackDown hasn't aired what time yet, is obviously. It? 10 11. 10 11, yeah. I could put it on. You could, <laughs> you could put it on. So while Jared is scrolling over to the USA network here, make sure. I you don't guys, know why. I, I hope this doesn't count towards the ratings. I don't want to give them ratings. You're going to give them ratings. This counts. It's by number of t- TVs that have it on. It doesn't matter if you're on your fucking Roku TV or what. I mean, it all counts. But as I was saying, if you haven't already subscribed oh to the show. Oh, my God. Randy Orton just beat the fuck out of Keith Lee. Absolute trash. What a debut for the mighty Keith Lee, the limitless one. What the fuck? This is live reactions to Raw right now. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Drew McIntyre saving Keith Lee. What a man! <laughs> what a baby face! He's so heroic. Way to make Keith Lee look strong on his debut. That's good. Yeah. 
Real good. I'm glad I turned on Raw today. <laughs> right at this exact moment. Jesus yeah. Christ, this sucks. Randy Orton's running off into the Thunderdome. Drew McIntyre's limping for some reason? Uh, he might have had a match earlier. I don't know. Now, where, where, Keith, where, where, Keith Keith how does just, a man that size disappear? He just dissolved. He must have been really selling then if he can get up and get out of the way that quick. Oh, he must have got his ass beat in the, in the back earlier. Because he's stumbling around. I, I think Randy Orton must have jumped him in the back or something. Maybe. We have no volume right now. so We have just no kinda... context on what's going on at all. We just see this dude that looks like fucking Sal Vocano from a Practical Jokers on the screen back there. You see that guy? <laughs> Where did Keith Lee go? Jesus I don't know. Christ. That sucks. The big dog is back this, this Friday. Friday. Wow. Damn. Wreck everyone and leave. That's what Yeah, that's the shirt. All right. So So anyways, Monday Night Raw is trash. You guys don't need to watch it. We just gave you the lowdown on probably the biggest angle they're going to run tonight. Yeah. And, Bro, uh, breaking news. It was the fucking... Oh, it's a, it's a commercial. All right. So... So uh, I guess while we're on the topic of beating people up... Uh, I mean, Robert Pattinson put in some work on that guy. <laughs> that so trailer. a lot of people are really happy with this new Batman trailer. And uh, I... Are you stirring up some controversy? No, no controversy. Were, were you not from, stoked? Did you not think it looks great? I think that it looks phenomenal. Then uh, what's the problem? I I don't know you if I've You sound like ever, you have a problem. I don't know if I've ever been on record on the podcast saying that I wasn't excited for Robert Pattinson or something or saying it was a bad idea to cast Robert Pattinson. But as like to me, I'm not really surprised that Robert Pattinson is looking good in the new Batman trailer. No, the dude's great. I mean, he. I mean, I, honestly, like everyone knows that he fucking hates Twilight or whatever. But like, if you've watched his other shit, like, dude's legit. So, have you seen what's that one movie? He, the Safdie Brothers one. I I forget what it's called. It no, matter. I haven't seen much Robert Pattinson's but, work, but I know. That he's well regarded and a talented, a talented actor. Yeah, the, um, light, the lighthouse is fucking great. If you haven't seen that, either. Uh, it just doesn't seem like my style. Yeah, it's not your style, but it's a good film. Um, so, but I'm like, I don't know. I watched the trailer and I was just not surprised. But a lot of people are like, "Wow, Robert Pattinson really proved me wrong." No, I I've, I know for a fact that I've been on the record on the podcast saying that he was going to be great. So. Okay. There's nothing, well, uh, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> I, st- I stand by that. I mean, the trailer looks really good. Um, I like that it addressed that Batman is probably wearing some sort of eyeliner to cover up his eyes. Oh, yeah. The cowl. Absolutely. Um, and people are like uh, kind of, I don't know if it's like a meme, but people have been posting about emo Robert Pattinson. I will say that um, I don't like the way he's doing his hair. For the Bruce Wayne scenes, and it's the, way too emo. Yeah, he looks emo, like emo Bruce Wayne. We don't need it. We already got emo Peter Parker. He should have just slicked the hair back, did the pompadour, or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I don't know. In 2020, is that really like a professional hairstyle? No, I, no one really has the bangs anymore. Right? Yeah. It's not. It, I mean, who, does this does it take place in 2020? I would assume it's modern day. I don't know when it takes place. The Batmobile looked not as high tech as it has in earlier movies. It kind of looked like a fucking, like, a Mustang, like an older Mustang with, like, yeah. he put, like, a fucking insane, like, <laughs> nitrous engine or something on the back Some of it. crazy like, shit. I don't know. It didn't look as high tech, but um, it looks brutal. Is, it, is this going to be rated R? I would hope. I mean, I don't think it will be, because um, they don't really rate superhero movies rated R. Uh, they start. They've started in recent years though with, with Deadpool, with Deadpool. Venom. You know what I mean? Deadpool. I, I mean, obviously Deadpool. I didn't realize Ren- Venom. Was actually, I think they added it to PG thirteen. Maybe because that's. I mean, I'm no, sure. no. It was rated R. Venom was. I'm Are pretty sure? sure. Like it was a big deal to be rated R. Because I know Deadpool was, obviously. Are you checking it out? Yeah, I'll look up the Venom thing. But, I mean, who knows now what they're going to try to do. Because I'm, I'm assuming they're going to try to get as many things PG-13 as possible when theaters reopen. Well, it's to- Batman, who's one of the most popular superheroes of all time. And so, 
you're going to fucking want to get it PG-13 for the damn kids. Um, but, like... PG-13, Venom. Really? Yeah. I swear to God it was supposed to be rated I'm sure, R. I'm sure there's an uncut version. Like, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad if they release it in theaters, PG-13, but then they did, like, an uncut. I mean, they do that with It doesn't shit. need to be rated R to be good, honestly. No, I mean, the rating doesn't matter, but... I would like to see some blood, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like... And, man... Just based on the fucking the blood, beat down in the, blood in the trailer. Really, when they're doing these ratings, the blood isn't really the issue. It's the swearing. Like, you can only say, like, one fuck um, for PG-13. I don't really I don't really care about swearing. They could go through a whole movie without swearing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, the ratings like typically it doesn't really don't matter. matter to me. But I don't think that you would still... I still don't think that you would get a PG-13 rating if it turns into, like, a giant fucking bloodbath. Well, I don't think it's going to turn into a giant fucking bloodbath. What if fucking Riddler? Awesome what if Riddler if like fucking like delivers like a severed head to Batman or something? He could. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean like that know. would it probably could be, it could be rated R. That would probably know. justify a rated R to me. Yeah, I mean, you would assume parents so. don't want to see the fucking severed head, like for their kid. I mean, the parents want to see it, but the you're probably thinking of Joker when you were talking about one that was rated R because Joker was rated R. Yeah, but that's not really a superhero movie. Yeah, but I mean, it, just comic book film in general. Um, I don't know. I mean, everything about the trailer looked good to me. Um, I still think that they should have fucking paid Jonah Hill what he wanted so he would be Penguin, but because that <laughs> would have been incredible. Well, it's been a it's been a minute. Well, it's been a, it's been even longer since we've had Penguin as a villain, but. Um, I think that for like the last few uh, movies, uh, people have really wanted to see the Riddler, yeah. and it's it's he, definitely here's, here's the another thing about Riddler. wrestling that made no sense. I completely fucking forgot about this. He's using a fucking box cutter to cut open the ring, and then they just don't use it as a weapon anymore. <laughs> well, that's you know typical WWE. They do stuff like that. All, uh, you can't he can't use a box cutter as a weapon. It, they're recapping the uh, Roman Reigns return last night. Yeah. But anyway, any other thoughts about Batman? We just watched the trailer together. Um, um, I hadn't seen it. it. It was released, like, what, like, immediately after we recorded the last podcast, they had that, like, DC online convention thing, like DC Dome or whatever. That's where the trailer debuted. Oh, well, I don't, I don't know anything about it. Probably fucking hella news that on there that we're not even talking well, about. Well, they dropped like a Black Adam concept art with The Rock or something. I didn't pay attention. To I forgot that, so. he got cast to do that shit. Yeah. Um. I mean, is it is that official? No triple holds threat match? barred. Triple threat. Wow, that's the breaking news. Okay. On payback, so this Sunday. I like I, Ro- I like Roman's so promo much. shot. It's literally. Just a picture of him from his return, looking yeah. flustered. I cannot believe that they're doing payback in a week. That's a big main event, though. Yeah, it is, but it seems a little quick. But that's fine. I mean, it is payback. I mean, it should be rather quickly after, but the next week. That's stupid. Who cares? Yeah. Anyways, yeah, uh, Batman trailer looks good. I'm not surprised by it. I don't see why anybody would be surprised that uh, that it looks good. Honestly, uh, I think that uh, everybody that's played Batman has done a good job, in and, my opinion. And, like, the best Batman, in my opinion, Michael Keaton. I mean, people said shit about him, too, because he was in Mr. Mom and, like, all this shit. Yeah. So, like, the best Batman are really, like, the ones you don't expect i guess well people were talking shit on ben affleck and i still don't think ben affleck did a bad job i think that the movies that he was in were um oh jesus christ oh drew mcintyre's dead um (laughs) so uh i think that the movies that ben affleck was in kind of let down the batman character but not specifically really ben affleck's fault right um I think he did a fine job. He looked good as Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Apparently he's coming back for the Flash movie. Really? Yeah, they brought, they're bringing him back for the Flash. There's going to be two Batman in it, I guess. I don't know. Oh. It's fucking confusing. It's because it's Flashpoint. Yeah. 
that's like a storyline where Flash like goes like to All different over. like dimensions, yeah, or whatever. And so like there's a I know specifically that there is a um, like an alternate reality that he goes to where Thomas Wayne is actually Batman. Oh really? And that yeah. like the reason why he became Batman is because instead of getting killed, Bruce got killed in the alleyway. Oh okay. Well that's an interesting twist. So it's yeah. kind of like. A Spider Verse scenario where it's just all the kind of except Flash yeah. is the main character. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure in the comic Thomas Wayne plays like a huge role in it. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. Well, yeah. I'll probably never watch it, <laughs> but we'll see. Well, yeah. I don't know. I haven't. I don't. I don't really watch comic book. Movies. I'm gonna see the Batman for sure. Oh, I I see like without a doubt opening night. So I see pretty much every Batman movie that comes out in theaters. So, I mean, I didn't see Justice League, but I'm going to use the excuse that that's not a Batman movie. Yeah. Even you didn't though see Batman's it at all or you didn't it. see it in theaters? I see, I've seen, like, um, like three quarters of it at Maisie's house, like, a couple months ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Snyder Cut's supposed to be coming soon to HBO Max or whatever. Oh, wow. Thank God we got to get yeah. on that one. Yeah, live reaction to that one. Um, but, yeah, Batman trailer looks great. Um there's not too much more information. It's still in production. So and by the way, people's fucking hate on Christian Bale's Batman still to this day. And like, shut the fuck up. He was a good Batman. You just don't like the voice and you fucking get too, people get too fucking butthurt about that voice. The only Batman that I th- thought was like terrible in like the modern era was Val Kilmer. I was not a fan of him. And you like, think- say, like same with George Clooney. Like if George Clooney would have been in a better movie, it would have been fine. Yeah. But it is what it is. Yeah, because George Clooney looks like a good Bruce Wayne. He would have been a a good Batman if he was given the right material. But, you know, rest in peace, Joel Schumacher, by the way. Oh, yeah. Fucking fucking legend, yeah. Damn, I forgot about that. Yeah, we just watched Lost Boys the other day. I watched Lost Boys. I need to rewatch Lost Boys with Maisie. I don't know if she's ever seen it. Or it was Emily's first time, that's why we watched it. Yeah, I remember when I watched it with Michan, and she was not that impressed. Really? I will say Fright Night is significantly better. I don't know about that. I, 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 I like think they're like... I kind of like them equally, honestly. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not like... We tried to watch Fright Night a couple weeks ago, and Maisie fell asleep. It takes a little bit to get going. I will admit. And I mean, I went to sleep eventually, too, because I've seen the movie three times. And, like, I think the last time I watched it all the way through, it was with you, right? We were sitting out here. Have we seen Friday Night together? I think so. We might have had it on, I yeah. think that I think me, you, me, Chan, and Emily watched it all together. Really? It was like oh, we might night. have, yeah. Yeah. And, and like, everybody yeah, we went did. to bed. We did, yeah, because Emily Miria went to bed, and I think Emily fell asleep, and it was just me and you were, like, Watching the last the man standing. fucking head banging so I, hard. And I remember, because I was like, I remember, because I was like, I don't remember this movie being as violent as it was. Once it, once, it, once they get in the house at the end, Cat, like, all bets are off. But yeah, it gets really violent. I always remembered it as being, like, a really kind of, like, a silly movie, but, like, I remembered it wrong. The effects are great, man. The effects and, are great. Fun fact, did you know that, the, like, the one girl, like, with the smile or whatever, that was, like, an afterthought, that was not going to be a thing, and the last minute they decided to do that, and then now that's on all the posters for, like, the end of time? Oh, yeah. 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 Have you have you still not seen Fright Night 2? I've not seen Fright Night 2, Dude, or, or the remake. Well, I don't care about the remake. I've not no, I'm seen just saying, the I, that's the only one I've seen. I've not one. seen the remake, but uh, Fright Night 2, the original, is, like, fucking good uh, yeah underrated i underrated. would say not talked about enough me and miles loved it very fun movie yeah i'm There's gonna like a werewolf in it too i'm gonna have to check it out um we're gonna have to talk because i'm trying to think of good halloween episodes i'm thinking a good one we could talk about is give some of the horror sequels some love of uh, some that are like underrated and stuff i thought that would be a good topic to do yeah i could think of i mean we just talked about fright night 2 i think that the uh, fly 2 is is really underrated i haven't seen it i mean but. there you go like there's not enough hype behind the movie to get you to see it but i think one that we can both agree on that's um probably maybe not so much underrated cuz i feel like a lot of people that see it agree that it's amazing um but Maybe underhyped, not talked about enough. Psycho 2. 
Yeah, I, like, we've talked about it on the show before, yeah, but yeah, that's not a, talked about enough. Yeah, you know, it looks like Sasha's feeling pretty good after losing her title. They're already. still, they're still friends. They're still hanging out. Um, but yeah, um, while we're on the topic, sort of of superheroes, just a quick update. This might be breaking news to you because I saw it in my car on the drive over. They are rebooting the Powerpuff Girls into a live action series. <laughs> absolute garbage yeah i mean well what the last time they rebooted powerpuff girls into a cartoon series it was really bad i don't know if they were did they reboot it or did they just take a break and then start again or was it a full-on reboot oh jeez i'm 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 saying it was a reboot because of the way that the show was written was like i i don't know if i really ever watched the was like really bad very like modern like really like the jokes were all like OMG, like... Oh, God. You know... Then I'm glad I never fucking watched those. Oh, God, but like... I've you know, just the watched... original... Pa- I, I, I think I've gone on record. The original Powerpuff Girls, fucking incredible show. Yeah, it was a good show. I remember um, loving that show when I was a kid. And being super hyped when they did the Rowdy Rough Boys episode. Oh, yeah. Like, I was hyped for that. Yeah. Um, that was a good show. But, I mean, a lot of those cartoon cartoons were just... Were just really good. They don't... They don't make them like that anymore. No, and yeah, I was definitely a Cartoon Network kid, like Ed and Eddie, fucking Dexter's Lab, all that. I kind of I stuff, started. So. Are they having a match? They're having some sort of match right now. Is this a it's rematch? a lumberjack match for the title? Interesting. Interesting stuff. Um, so we're referring to Oscar and Bailey right now. Um, so anyways, um. But did you know about... Was that breaking news to you? That's breaking news to yeah. me. I'm not excited. So, um, I pulled the article up. I just left it up when I saw it in the car. There's literally no information about this at all. But it says that... Um, where is it? Because it was fucking ridiculous. The new series will follow Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup as delusioned 20-somethings who are now a bit resentful that they spent their childhood fighting crime instead of having fun. You know what? So, <laughs> honestly, honestly, on second thought, that sounds kind of funny. Actually, I don't know. Here's like I don't watch shows, so I would never really watch this anyway. But I don't know. Just the idea of doing a live action power. Well, CW does all those live action comic book shows like Titans and fucking. They adapted Riverdale like fucking Archie comic shit. Well, like I don't watch yeah, any of those shows. Dumb. But David, that's what the vibe it was giving me. It was giving me the Riverdale vibe when I read the article. But see, I'm on the absolute opposite spectrum of the Powerpuff Girls. Like, I'm mad. You want to see this? <laughs> I'm I'm mad that I spent my entire childhood having fun instead of taking care of business. Yeah. So now that I could have fun as an adult, you should have taken care of your business when you were younger. Right. Exactly. Saying? Yeah. Instead of like, fuck, I'm old now. Now I gotta. Figure out what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, what was that? Shotzi Blackheart? No, that's no, Ruby, Ruby Riot. Riot. With the fucking long green hair. I have what lo- are these Lumberjills doing? Literally nothing. Why have the match? Whose side are they on, though? Did Lumberjills aren't supposed to be on a side. They're yeah, but they're to- acting like they're on a side, is what I'm saying. Look at them. They're separated right now. Why is Shayna Baszler? Is that Mickey James? As a, oh, no. Bailey fa- as a baby face. I don't know who the fuck that was. It looked like Mickey James, but I don't even think she's with the company anymore. It doesn't fucking matter. Um, Powerpuff Girls not stoked about it. I'm cautiously optimistic. Cautiously optimistic. Okay, After man. you told me that, because when you first said it, it just sounded like like okay, we're gonna do a live action adaptation of Powerpuff Girls, not like kind of like a live action like sequel they maybe like kind of like a live action spin-off almost but yeah. not really a spin-off because it features the main characters but like sort of like an alternate universe kind of scenario maybe not even alternate universe. it's just like an interesting concept as opposed to going back to the formula but doing it live action which is something that i'm not a fan of turning it into something a little bit more relatable and then making it live action hey man as long as Fuzzy Lumpkins is still there. I'll be fine. I now I'm suddenly interested in seeing what Mojo Jojo is gonna look like. I don't do. How long is the lifespan of a chimp? 
Would he still be alive? I don't know, How but I feel... How long do chimps live? We're I don't know, but I don't. I feel like you can't do a fucking... He's also not an or- ordinary chimp. That's true. He probably figured out some sort of way to live forever. Oh, my God. I think it just said 59 years. Male in captivity, 32. So, he's been taking care of himself, so he'll still be so, around. yeah. 1999... The show started? And I think it was like 97. 97, 90, whatever. Like that. That's only uh, 22 years now. Mojo Jojo still got... He's still kicking, man. He's still got some time, even if he was already like four or five years old by the time that show came around. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to seeing... This will be a massive disappointment if we don't see... Mojo Jojo. A live action Mojo Jojo. If we and don't you know, see I'm telling villains, you right yeah. now, I don't want to see like a fucking... I know what we're definitely going to see, which is a very poorly done CGI monkey. Oh, yeah, I, I would imagine. Very poorly done. Very poorly done. On a, if it was a film, that would probably be fine, but not on a TV budget. You're not going to get anything that looks even remotely good. You know what, though? The shark in the Flash TV show ended up looking really good. I would never know. Did it look good? I'm pretty sure if he ever actually did. Look it up right now. Like Flash TV show, the shark. Um, the uh, but yeah, that's I don't know. You think him is going to be on there? In this day and age, yes. <laughs> I feel like he'll be widely celebrated. I mean, it's not the worst, but that shot is what I remember seeing. I thought that that looked the lighting good. helps a lot. Yeah. Well, CGI of- always looks better in darker lighting. Yeah. To hide that it's CGI. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could still tell by the kind of like the unnatural movement of it, but yeah, I'm I'm wondering if there will ever be a day where the naked eye can't really recognize special effects. I don't. Think Aside so. from like skepticism, you know, what I mean, like obviously it can't be a fucking giant lizard attacking the city, but I mean the problem with animatronics is that it doesn't move very naturally. Yeah. The problem with CGI is that it moves like too no. smoothly yeah. like things just move too smoothly it doesn't, like doesn't look realistic yeah but powerpuff girls will keep you updated <laughs> in the in the months coming on what's going on with these powerpuff girls shows um yeah so anything else you want to talk i have a, a couple more things we we I, I reached out to one of our loyal listeners to uh see what he wanted us to talk about this week and okay he brought he brought up two topics for us. Okay. Um, so we'll save one for another time. We'll just talk about one. Um, Midnight Miles. Yep. He said have some sort of video game related segment or something. So does he want us to talk about Sega? I I, I would assume he wants us to talk. About I mean, because if, if he wants us, Sega mark of all if time. he wants if he wants us to talk about video games when we start talking about Nintendo, he's just gonna turn the podcast off because yeah, he's gonna be like, much. what what's that? <laughs> So what, I mean, a video game segment, I mean, I wish you'd be more specific. Yeah, I don't know. But I actually do have a video game related story, I can tell. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you've seen this on Facebook, but there's like a Lakeside Dragon like fundraiser group or something that like my mom's a part of where like basically they're trying to raise money for like the fucking sports and band at Lakeside. So like they're doing like these raffles and stuff you can bid on on Facebook. So my mom... For five dollars, won a Nintendo Switch, right? Fucking incredible, Nintendo Switch. You can't get them anywhere. Tell me why this shows up at her house, and it's the European Switch. Um, because LOL Lakeside. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, for those of you listening outside of Ashtabula, just know that Lakeside High School is like one of the most trash schools of all time. So. You, they, it's still playable. I mean, they got an adapter for it to like change the outlet. Yeah. So, so it's it's not like the the old days where like if you got like a Famicom game or whatever, it wouldn't work. Right. It, like, she should just works be. Now, but. She should just be happy that she didn't get a Switch Lite. Yeah. Garbage. But yeah, have you been playing your Switch recently? Nothing for me to play really. Yeah. Me and Emily have been playing Super Mario Party quite a bit recently. Just you two. Yeah, and uh, occasionally, like, Adrian will come over or whatever, and we played with Adrian says she doesn't like that one. Uh, I mean, she'll play it. I mean, she hasn't really said whether she likes it or I not. I mean, she wants to... She never wins when we play, I'll Right, say that, that's why brother. she doesn't like Here's it. Here's what I don't like about it. 
I think it's too easy to get stars. So once someone like gets going, it's like unstoppable. Hard. It's hard to stop, and they only give you two bonus stars at the end. So like if someone's, I'm so used to having the three stars at the end. So like if you're still behind, it's like all right, I got fucking. If I win these three stars, I'm good. But now it's only two. I don't remember noticing anything like that. I always kind of thought that the games were pretty, like, normally contested. But I'm pretty sure that I'm, like, have, like, a 100% win ratio for Super Mario <laughs> Party so far. Because I've only played Scrubs. Yeah. So maybe, like, when I went out by, like, 30 stars, I was just like, well, I'm yeah. playing against Scrubs. So. Well, next time you come out, we might have to play it. Um, I don't like it also how, like, they got kind of lazy with it at times. Because, like, in every other Mario Party game, you win the game, and then what happens? They show, like, some sick animation. You're, like, floating through space, and people are falling and stuff. And this is literally just a split screen, and then the person who wins smiles or whatever. Did you notice that? It just seems like they didn't put as much effort into making it something unique. I don't know. I, very standard I, I game. Didn't, I didn't notice, honestly. Yeah. I like the game. I, like, it's way better than oh it's the uh, best the, one since like seven I would yeah say. yeah i mean definitely better than any of the ones on the wii or the wii u i didn't even know if they had one on wii u i think there's just like two on the wii like eight and nine and then there's a 10 so 10 must be on wii u okay maybe but yeah because this one's the 11th one for sure wait 10 is the one where you have to play as like a team right so nine and 10 is when you're in the car going around trash yeah and then eight is like what the one with like the mini stars something like that um i think eight is just like a standard mario party game but it was the first one that was like all motion controlled because that was the one on the wii because seven was the last one on gamecube it's so dumb because like with the motion controls there's like so much potential for like good mini games on mario party and then you could still have like traditional ones where you could just yeah turn the controller sideways and then do it like that just you know wasted potential yeah i mean super mario party has some decent ones i like like the steak flipping game and the one where you have to like get the coin out of the jar or whatever like i feel like they actually use the most controls appropriately in in the switch one oh yeah a lot of times but no i like super mario party a lot it's definitely like you said the best in seven um and I mean, Miles shut the shut the podcast off because we started talking yeah. about Nintendo. Yeah. But I mean, there's a reason why Sega doesn't make consoles anymore, yeah. Miles. Yeah. Emily and I were talking about that last night because she was kind of confused because we were talking about like, or wasn't it Maisie who said that like, oh, aren't isn't Sonic a Nintendo character or something like that? Kind of. But but yeah, I was explaining to Emily last night that Sonic Team produces games on all the consoles, right. but it was just like. It's mainly Nintendo now, because I said that, like, in the 90s, they were, like, the direct competition until, like, they went under with consoles and stuff, so. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm, as far as video games are concerned, uh, I kind of want to play that cyberpunk game when it comes out. Yeah. It looks good. Um, have you been playing Ghost of Tsushima? No, I don't even have it, but I want to play it, yeah. Yeah. I've heard good things about it, but... Yeah, I heard good things about it, too. I actually considered splurging on it and then streaming the whole thing as I played it, but I don't have enough of a following to really justify that right now. Yeah, and and that's what everyone's doing right now. So, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't got really anything else to talk about. Cool. Uh, If you guys haven't subscribed to the show yet, make sure you go ahead and do that. Well, we gotta switch back to the Laker game. We gotta see how fucking we gotta we gotta get an update. See if the Blazers came back, man. The fans the fans need to know what's going on with this NBA game that happened six days before they're listening to this. So, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys are subscribing to the show on whatever podcast streaming service you're listening to it on, or on our YouTube channel. If you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure that you are leaving a rating and a review for the show. That is something No Star can do. He can review the show for us on there, but it would just be a one-time thing. So better be a resounding review, my friend. Um, And yeah, that's about all I have to say about that. Jared's getting the, the app up here for us. 
see how see how this game's going because I know you guys are in deep suspense. It's um, probably a halftime right now. Yeah, but it'll probably show the score. At least. I mean, I guess I could just look up the score. Yeah. But. Oh, oh yeah, Black, Black Panther. Yeah. Wow. Well, all right. Well, I'm just gonna look up the score. That's an Oscar nominee right there. San Andreas. Ant Man and Wasp. Oh my god, it's a fucking bloodbath. 80 to 51 at halftime. Alright. It's fucking so, done. Yep. So that's about <laughs> that's about it for this week, guys. LeBron has had enough. Yeah. I I was saying Lakers and six or in I think I said in five. I don't know if you've said I said I, five or six. Yeah, I'm, it's it's looking like five, but Oh, the Blazers put up a valiant effort. I mean they weren't even supposed to be there, really, so. Yeah. It is what it is. All right, this is Buddy the Bruiser. I'm signing off. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel at Dynamite Jared. Um, I think at the end of this week coming up, uh, Dokkan live stream summons. So check it out. Dynamite Jared signing off.